my name is Wani and I'm from Planning and Engineering Department of Indah Water Consortium Sriam Bahad. My talk today will be on green tech application in wastewater management. As everybody aware, Malaysia has pledged to reduce its GHG emission intensity of GDP by up to 45% by 2030 related to 205 levels. In order to achieve the 45% target, requires commitment from both government and private sectors. In line with the commitment made, the National Green Tech Master Plan has outlined the strategic action plan for green technology development to create a low carbon and resource efficient economy in the country. It has also outlined the target of respective key focus area, namely energy, manufacturing, transportation, building, waste and water on green technology application which has potentially generated the most observable socio-economic and environmental impact. Our wastewater services and businesses falls under primary target of water sector where as you can see here by 2030 100 percent of sludge to be recycled for reuse or electricity generation and 33% of treated effluent produced to be recycled for reuse. To drive the GHG reduction initiatives, as shown here, requires top management commitment and teamwork from all departments within the company. Hence, proper planning and implementation or execution via roadmap, strategy and action plan are crucial to ensure the company is able to meet the target set by 2030. With that, IWK Green Master Plan Committee has been established to drive all the proposed strategy and action plan in order to achieve the set target. Three triers of committee, which includes corporate, steering and working committee, have been established and approved by our top management on April 2018. We have identified activities within the company that contributes to GHG emission either direct or indirectly. We have divided the GHG emission into three scopes which are scope 1 direct emission from our activities such as waste treatment plants and sludge treatment facilities process, fuel consumption used for our old company vehicle and our genset. Scope 2 involved in direct emission mainly from purchase of electricity from TMB for all our facility including offices, sewage treatment plant, pump station, lab, reporting centre, etc. Scope 3, also indirect emission from our staff travelling for both business and training purposes and our dried sludge or biosolid sent to landfill or municipal solid waste disposal site for final disposal. We have calculated our GHG emission annually. With availability of continuous annual data, we can observe the trend of our GHG emission from the company and able to gauge our performance whether we are moving towards a low carbon sewerage wastewater services sector or otherwise. As shown in the chat here, the main contributor of GHG emission from the company are from purchase of electricity which contributes about 52.5% followed by sewage treatment plant processes which contributes to methane and nitrous oxide gases emission around 36.5% from the total GHG emission of the company of 770,961 metric ton CO2 equivalent. For your information, over 80% of public STP are using mechanical treatment system where equipment such as pump, blower consume a large amount of electricity or energy for their daily and continuous operations. We are proud to say here that all the data reported here have been verified by the external GHG verifier. Overall, GHG emission from the company in CO2 equivalent are shown to be higher than our base year of 2013. However, in order to monitor our GHG emission performance, we need to take into account 
for any business expansion or changes in our business dimension. As you can see here, our PE serve increase in tandem with the population and development growth. Hence, for the comparison and monitoring of the GHG reduction target achievement, it is most appropriate that GHG emission is calculated based on emissions intensity, which is emission GHG emission based on population equivalent or PE served by the company during the respective year. Table here indicate that there is reduction of CO2 emission per PE in 2018 around 13.33% as compared to the base year of year 2013. In summary, although there is increase in organization growth, which is increase in coverage area of services, increase in numbers of public sewage and plumbing takeover, increase in numbers of staff, etc., the company still managed to reduce its total GHG emissions intensity over the years. Indah Water have been implementing a green technology for our operational improvement, basically to reduce our energy and fuel consumption, promoting our switch by-product reuse and utilizing our renewable energy. For example, on sewage by-product reuse, we are now expanding on our bioaffluent reuse for internal application, especially for STP cleaning purposes and also for external application where we supply our treated effluent after undergo advanced tertiary treatment to industry for non-portable usage and watering landscape plant. Same goes to biosolid reuse where some local authorities have used our biosolid as fertilizer for their landscape plant as a source of nutrient for plant growth. Currently, we are also looking on proposal and option to convert biosolid into energy such as biofuel, electricity, biomass, etc. On renewable energy, we have three initiatives on board which is through conversion of biogas generated from our anaerobic digester to electricity, solar panel installation at stable site within our STP, and microhydro from our final effluent upfall. Apart from that, we have been implementing ISO 50001 energy management system at few of our sewage treatment plants and offices. Among of the initiatives are promoting the use of energy saving equipment such as tubo blower, pumps, plant optimization, etc. We have also managed to reduce our fuel consumption via implementation of vehicle tracking system, genset rationalization and all vehicle replacement. We are now starting to promote green administrative and green habits culture within the company via embarking into e-procurement and green procurement process. Green office that implement energy saving, reuse and recycling and also tree planting initiative via nationwide Friends of River program. Thank you for listening to my pocket talk. Stay safe everyone. Bye. My name is Sibun Piao, Head of Treatment Section at Unit Operation Kuala Lumpur. I would like to talk about applications of green tech technology at Pantai 2 Regional Civic Treatment Plant. There are seven green tech initiatives implemented at Pantai 2 Civic Treatment Plant. Green tech application at Pantai 2. Number one, effluent reuse. Pantai 2 utilizes advanced treatment technologies to produce reuse water that meets quantity and quality for plant operation maintenance. The treatment system is ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis. Approximately 2 million liters per day of reclaimed water is used for dairy plant operation and maintenance, which includes the Sky River at Echo Park, a modern public amenities attached to the plant. Number two, wastewater source heat system. It's a new technology using the treated effluent from the plant for cooling the chilled water used for, the, for air conditioning at the entire administration building, at the plant, and Echo Park. 
total water reuse for cooling the air conditioning is approximately 7.2 million liters per day. Number three, turbo blowers. We are using turbo blowers for aeration system. It is one of the most cost-efficient blower available in the market, saving of 30% power in comparison with the conventional blower. Aeration cost constitute approximately 50% of the total energy utilized at the plant. Number four, aquatic skylight. Pantai 2 sewage treatment plants has three layers of maintenance platforms, required electricity to lighting up the maintenance area for daily activities. Hence, aquatic skylight is providing natural lighting and illuminations for underground facility at Pantai 2 to supplement the illumination needs. Number five, solar panel installed at various car parking lots for generating approximately 200 kilowatt of renewable solar energy for plant usage. Number six, biogas engine. Biogas generated from the anaerobic digester is used to generate electricity for plant usage and to recover the heat generated for reheating the digester system. Total energy generated from the biogas engine is approximately 8 megawatt per day. It is sufficient to supply power to the facility located above ground and other treatment facility. Number seven, rainwater harvesting. To reduce water uses in the administration building, we are using rainwater for toilet flushing system and cleaning. Thank you for listening. My pocket talk. Stay safe.